Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert on September 25th, 2019, part two of the first flush system. And it is in and it is working. Or, well, at least I think it's going to work. All right. So, let me show you some of the things I did here. Um, number one. There's my little drain at the bottom there. Now, you see the little black uh, nut that's on there. There's one on the outside and one on the inside. And I used a half inch um, nipple, threaded nipple. And th what those are, are these pieces right here. When you change out a faucet, that is actually half inch pipe thread. Okay. So I don't throw things like this away. I always put them on a shelf, say, well, I can use that for something. So this is a faucet I changed out a while back and I had it thrown in my um, scrap recycle bin because I rec recycle all the copper and brass. And I'll take these handles off because I might use those for something, who knows? So um, these I could cut off and save those all threads and use them down the line, but I don't think I need them because I just use regular threaded pipe, uh, plastic nipple, whatever. And then these things, if you put one that way and one that way, you can use that for a bulkhead hub going through plastic. And you can put, actually put, you put your um, threaded nipple in there and then put an O-ring around it. And the O-ring will sit in that little recessed area right there. And that'll give you a seal also. So, or you can use a large uh, rubber washer, which you can buy at the hardware store. So these things are really handy. So don't throw them away. All right. So my bottle is inside here. And what I did was I fastened two large hose clamps to the container using a couple of self-drilling screws right into the container. One on the top and one on the bottom of the strap. And then I used a couple of pieces of old garden hose um, on there to give it a good grip and so it won't slide up and down. It's it's held nice and tight against there. As, um, that is 72 inches up to the T. So 72 inches uh, is going to give me 12 quarts of uh, first flush. And 12 quarts of course is 3 gallons. Um, I've heard some people say 3 gallons isn't enough. Well, that all depends on how much dirt you're cleaning off of your surface at the time that it happens. And we have a lot of strong winds out here. So a lot of the stuff that's up there on the roof gets blown off anyway. Now, there will be some small minor dust and stuff like that up there. And uh, that's going to come down and go through here. Now, if I notice that the water that's going inside of here, if I see it starting to look a little bit dirty, all I have to do is pull that plug right there, which is going to end up getting replaced with a um, hose bib. And I can just pull that plug right there and drain off some of the water into a, a, a five gallon pail and let that uh, refill again. It doesn't have to just fill one time and stop. Now, that silicone I used, after I put it on, I also put it around the outside edge here and sealed the the outside part of that because I want that to be watertight and that's going to be quite heavy so I put two straps on it to hold it in place it's uh, three gallons of water you've probably carried three gallons before and uh, one in each hand is good enough you try you don't put two in one hand and the other in the, and one in the other because they're too heavy so that's the, the design I came up with and that fitting up there a square fitting worked out just great I put one screw in it to hold it up against the downspout and that's it. Then it comes over and it's on a slant, so a downhill slant. And then the um, 245s direct it downward. And then here's my inlet and there's my little angle bracket that holds it in place so the wind won't blow it over. Now, because we do have really strong winds out here sometimes, what I might end up doing is putting a strap from this metal position right there, I could even lo loosen that bolt and put it behind the bolt, go up, wrap it around there, and go back down the other side. So it'll give me that extra support so that thing don't, doesn't want to work back and forth in the wind. 
all right but we'll see how it goes with the way it is right now all right so that is a first flush system so what happens is when the rain comes runs in off the roof goes into the gutter and then it comes down the, the spout all right so the first place it's going to go as gravity wants it to is straight on down and that's going to cause the water to bypass that bottle because there is a a little clearance between the bottle and the pipe so the, the, the water will go past the bottle and that's going to cause the bottle to start floating upward and the bottle goes up and then you remember in part one I showed you that little piece that I took off the cap of the tote when I when I cut it with the hole saw I put that up inside the bottom of the T so now when the bottle gets up there the water pressure itself is going to press it tight against that bottom fitting and that's going to cause a blockage there so the water can't come down anymore so where's it going to go it's got to go that way and into the tote and then of course the two totes are tied together here with my one inch manifold so as this one fills up this one will fill up pretty cool huh then i can drain that off down to the garden house when they're full so that uh, I have more room for the next rain. All right, so remember everybody, um, a first flush system is nice for trying to keep your water a little bit cleaner, but it's not the ultimate in cleanliness. If you're gonna use this for um, human consumption and all of that, there's another step that has to be done on the output side of it. It has to go through a half micron um, filter screen system and then go through a filtration system and go through compressed carbon block filter system so it takes out the rest of the contaminants that are in the water and gives you pure water all right and there are some neat little tricks that you could do with the uh, clean rocks you can boil some nice clean rocks and uh, get them get them super clean get all the contaminants off of them and you can run your water through a container with those rocks in it and add mi uh, certain minerals back to the water that all of that filtration takes out and the minerals are actually good for you as a major filtration systems have come about because of water pollution because of butt heads throwing stuff like kids diapers and things like that into water systems some waterways well you know all that stuff ends up spoiling our water for us so they came out with filtration systems. And then, of course, you got the uh, tweakers out there that uh, go out and party next to a stream or uh, a body of water. And they shoot up, and while they're high, they throw the needles away and drop them in the water and the sand, things like that. Well, pharmaceuticals get into the water. So you got to have a good filtration system before you use it for consumption. All right, but for if you're just going to use it for, um, like I'm going to be using this for, uh, the, probably the chickens and the garden. So what the heck? You know, if there's a little bit of contaminant in it, it won't hurt the, those things. Um, if I need to filtrate it out more, I can also put up a solar distiller and I can distill the uh, stuff out. And for those of you who don't know what a solar distiller is, look back through my playlists and you'll see a solar distiller that I built a long time ago uh, before I moved out here. And I didn't bring it with me because it got beaten around uh, at my last place uh, moving uh, in the moving process. And it cr cracked and made some leaks. And I figured, well, it's not worth trying to repair it. So I'll just build a new one when I get out here. Well, I haven't had time to get to that yet. But there we go. That's what that's all about. Any questions, be, feel free to ask. I'd be glad to answer them. Okay, while I was at Home Depot today, I've been doing some research online, and I found out that a couple of companies make this stuff. All right, this is great um, if it works. And it says it's a money-back guarantee, and this will cover 275 square feet per can. And they sell it in larger bottles, too, that aren't an aerosol. You can actually pump spray them. But uh, this has uh, sodium laurel sulfate, peppermint oil, cinnamon oil, garlic oil, water sodium benzoate benzoate and uh, xanthan gum and uh, this is uh, supposed to keep mice and rats away so i sprayed all around all of the entrances and stuff and inside the 
um, chicken coop and see if I can uh, make sure I have no more problem with rats going in there so that the uh, um, chickens move back in because the winter's coming they're going to need that uh, warmth all right so this came from Home Depot um, not that expensive and uh, if it works well it's going to be a good thing all right so we got that covered now before I close off this video I know this was all about first flush system but I wanted to cover one more thing because I heard from Forever North Sanctuary today uh, he's finally got a chance to start watching and catching up on some of my videos that I did for him and uh, he was mentioning that uh, his batteries uh, when he goes to bed at night are at 11.7 and when he gets up they're at 11.5 and uh, he's going to get some more panels and let me explain an off-grid solar system for you okay people confuse it with an on-grid system now if you're on grid you put your solar panels out there you want as many solar panels as you can get because you're not charging a battery bank they are not a battery charger at that point on an on-grid system those are providing your power directly into your service panel and the excess just goes back out to whoever your electrical supplier is and they sell it to your neighbor and they give you the money or part of the money that they make for selling that electricity so you're producing extra electricity for the grid off-grid system these are battery charges I've said it before I'll say it again these are not for running your household these are to charge your battery system all those batteries are what run your household. Okay, after dark, these things don't do you any good. So where's your electricity coming from? The batteries. All right. So if you, here's the easy way to tell if you need more batteries or more panels. All right. And I, this is a very simple method of determining what you need. All right. You see my gauges up there. Let me zoom in. And this during the day, it's an overcast day right now, and the amount of overcast that's out there is per, lowering the amount of production that I'm norm, I normally get from my solar panels. But I'm still at 13.1. Okay. Now remember, batteries are fully charged at 12.6 volts. So 13.1 means I'm producing more electricity with my the existing solar panels then I need to charge these batteries and with the overage that's coming out of the batteries the batteries are still running through the inverter and still running all of my power tools all of my household um, appliances um, my lights and stuff like that everything's running off of this all day long and I've got two refrigerators okay so Everything runs, and I still have more than 12.6 volts on my charge controller, which means that my batteries are happy. My batteries are still being drawn from to run everything because that's what's connected to the inverter. The solar panels are not connected to the inverter. The batteries are. The solar panels are connected to the batteries. They are battery chargers, okay? So I got extra electricity going into the batteries, more than what I'm using throughout the day. That means I don't need more solar panels. Now at night, when I'm after the sun sets and the wind's not blowing because I got a turbine, but let's skip turbines for right now. Let's say we're just on solar. After the sun sets, I got no more power coming in. So all of a sudden, my charge controllers start reading 12.3, 12.2, okay? Well, 12.6 is a full charged battery, and we know that these batteries are fully charged because we're over that right now. At, we're, we're definitely over 12.6, so my batteries are fully charged. So if it drops down to 12.2, 12.3, 12.1 at nighttime, what that's telling me is that these batteries are just barely servicing the electricity I need when the sun sets. Okay, so what it actually is telling me is I could use a few more batteries. 
and that's what this bottom shelf is for. This is where the batteries that I needed to buy are supposed to go. And just because finances have taken me other places, like a new transmission and things like that, I haven't been able to buy those batteries. But once I fill in those batteries, then at nighttime, running everything that I'm still running, just like I am now, instead of seeing 12.1 or 12.2 on, on the readings, I should be seeing 12.6 as a minimum. Okay, if not, I, it means I still need more batteries, not more solar panels. The solar panels are right now are telling me that they are giving me enough charge to maintain this big battery bank, okay? The batteries don't have enough power in them. Once the sun starts stops charging through the solar panels to run all of my appliances, that means I need more batteries, not more panels, okay? So I hope that explains it for you guys. I hope that makes it easier uh, to understand. And if not, hey, ask me. I'll tell you. G-Bear, reminding you, give me a thumbs up down there. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to save these, this information on first flush systems and, and batteries and uh, solar panels and things like that. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We've picked up a few more subscribers today. We got to get that sponsorship going. I know you people want free stuff. I like free stuff. So why not get some sponsors on here and we'll get some free stuff. And you'll also get to see new products and how they work before you buy them. G-Bear signing off.